Tales from the Void Beyond presents The Toothache Box Written and read by Alex Burton Chapter 1 Caban Filton threw a dried log onto the modest fireplace. It crackled and spat as he crouched before the hearth, the flames licking the rough stones at the back of the chimney, smoke blowing back briefly into his face. The small oval of weathered flesh containing his eyes and nose seemed squashed between unkept mass of brown hair and wildly bushy beard. A small animal carcass roasting on a spit between him and the fire turned autonomously simple pulley system with a worn cord reaching through the ceiling to a tired miniature windmill on the thatched roof. The room was the entire ground floor. It catered for every need a woodcutter's family needed. Every wall was filled with various tools, while shelves and cabinets were fit to burst and worktops used for whatever job was required of them. It all had its place and no spot was left empty. The room was dimly lit, the ageing light fittings glowing faintly. Caban's wife, Gueno, chopped at various root vegetables at one worktop. Damn it, Cave, she swore, sucking on a freshly cut finger. What is it, my love? he said softly, the hulk of a man standing over six foot. Can't we crank the power up a little? I can barely see in this light. I know, my darling, but the batteries need to have enough juice for old Sawtooth in the morning. The batteries were simply arcane storage units, invented by the mages, roughly the size of a chest, holding enough energy to light a home and run a few tools for a few hours, charged by either hydro or wind turbines. We live in the dark so that mechanical monster can live. A wry smile on her face. She understood, really, but was just cross from the chunk missing from her finger. Caban closed his big arms around her. He kissed her, deeply. It surprised her, but she enjoyed it more because it had. Then the door to the coldness outside opened. A chilled gust quickly filled the room. A hooded, cloaked figure entered and quickly shut the door, shaking snow and ice from the tatty cloak and stamping clumped snow from his feet. The husband and wife, still embraced, looked towards the passion killer, who stared back at them. Their son, Mikkel, realised he had interrupted a moment, grinned with a mixture of awkwardness and embarrassment. Sorry, uh, should I have not? He said, hanging the cloak with the other outdoor clothing. Caden and Gwaino both laughed like secret lovers discovered. Come on, lad, Caden bellowed. Sit by the fire, warm your bones. The animal's okay? Yeah, Mikkel said as he kissed his mother's cheek and headed to the chair his father was tapping near the fire. Lavender tried to get out again, but I repaired the fence well enough for tonight. The barn is locked and secure. That cow has been nothing but trouble, Gwena commented. That fellow in the market saw you coming. Caden smiled. I prefer animals with personality, he stated seriously while winking at his son. Hmm, I'm sure, she replied with a smile. As Gwena turned back to preparing the meal, Caden began to doze in his fireside chair the heat taking any remaining chill from his joints. The snow had fallen earlier than usual this year, although the surrounding trees shielded them from most of the wind and snowfall, the temperatures were still biting. A light tap of his knee roused him. Groggily opening his eyes, he saw his wife before him. Ready for you to carve, she said gently. He returned an acknowledging smile. He stood gingerly, noticing Mickle was engrossed in a well-worn book. What are you reading? He inquired as he moved to the table to carve the roasted meat. A book on electromony, the young man didn't look up. I borrowed it from old man Rafe in Felnwick. Looks like we have a future wizard in our midst, Caden joked. The boy looked up. I just like to understand the world around us is all. Don't tease him, Gwena scolded. Caden paused from his carving, placing a hand gently on his son's shoulder as he sat at the table his mother spooning various root vegetables onto his wooden plate. I'm sorry. I just want you to realise it is a tough world, and although we wish nothing more than for you to live your dreams, there are villains and monsters out there that would want nothing more than to stop you. The higher you climb, the stronger you must be. Father and son locked into each other's eyes, an unspoken understanding. Now, Caden exclaimed, thumping the table, 
Break open the Rougeberry Mead. Gwena retrieved a bottle of deep blue liquid and poured three cups. Here's to life and all that it throws at us. Blessed be the Dharma, mother of the wilds, and the gifts she gives us. The family drank as one. As he drank deeply, Caden went to listen to the wind howling through the woods around them. Except there was no sound of wind. The storm must have passed through, he thought to himself. But there was no sound at all. No wolves howling, no owls calling. Silence. As though the world had ceased to exist beyond the cottage. Mickle and Gwena noticed too, both looking confused and afraid in equal measure. For an eternity the three looked at one another, too afraid to speak, to break the sudden quiet. Then noise. Rattling. The pot on the counter began vibrating, tipping itself over the edge to the floor. Then another. And another. Items on the wall shook loose, one by one, until the whole building shook. Stronger and stronger. Caden could feel the ground vibrate, his body joining the frequency, his teeth chattering violently. A deep rumbling slowly filled the air around them. What began as a whisper rapidly built into a crescendo. Gwena covered her ears, pained expression towards her husband. Caden quickly pulled his loved ones under his arms. Whatever came, they would be together. Then, whiteness. A light from outside bleached out all that Caden could see. He wasn't even sure if his eyes were open or shut. The room quickly faded back into normality, all three blinking their sight back. The rumble had calmed. The cottage began to still unsettled dust drifting through the air. Then came the boom, like a century of endless thunder pressed into one single moment. The shockwave cracked across the sky and through the earth. No one dared speak. Mikkel was the first to move. As he ran to the door, his mother reached across the table. Wait! she screamed. But he was already at the door. Caden rushed to him as the young man stepped outside. Both men stood, open-mouthed. The snow began to fall again, lightly touching the bare skin with chilling caress. The tops of the trees were ablaze in a line that went as far as they could see in either direction. To the far left, a glow of distant fire, a mile, maybe more. Caden was already handing Mikkel his cloak before he could say a word to his father. Whether it was pure curiosity or a need to assess any danger to the forest, both father and son knew they had to go. The two men quickly gathered what they thought would be needed. They stood side by side, both cloaked in fur, a flaming torch in one hand. Mikkel carried a medium axe in the other hand. Caden, a larger ornate battle axe, an ancestral weapon of a bygone generation. Be careful, my loves, a tearful Gwena said to her men. Caden turned and gently wiped a tear from her cheek with a gloved hand. A sweet little smile was all he could muster to his wife. Mikkel hugged his mother tightly. She watched as her world, her husband and only child walked into the forest, into the unknown. The men trudged through the knee-deep snow for over an hour. Caden rarely came this far into the woods for fear of attack, either physical or metaphysical. Forest can be a dangerous place, disorientating, and home for the many beasts and monsters. The line of burning treetops acted as a breadcrumb trail, but the risk of... Mickle? Yes, father? The young man stopped in his tracks at the tone his father used. Have you seen or heard any wildlife? Caden said above the wind rushing around them. Mickle thought for a moment. Can't say that I have, now you mention it. Caden looked around into the surrounding gloom. We should have at least heard something, don't you think? Mikkel nodded, a look of concern in his eyes. Cain gave his son the best reassuring smile he could and they continued to make their way towards the now visible area of interest. As father and son grew closer, the burning trees lit the forest around them. They could see the giant centuries-old fallen trees had snapped in half. An object had cut like a wound from a sharpened blade. They ducked and crawled under the fallen giants that formed a massive lattice of splintered wood. Beyond was a crater, the air thick with smoke and dust, the snow 
falling heavier now made it impossible to see into the void, let alone the other side. How far do you reckon it goes? Mickle pondered. Caden thought for a moment. He had no clue. Then a tree, as though it was answering Mickle's question, slipped into the chasm as the soil that it was rested upon gave way. It disappeared into the dust cloud, tumbling into the void. The huge trees, flaming canopy, dimming from sight. It was deep. Come on, son, Caden said, taking his son's arm. We can't do anything here. We need to get to Felwink and alert the guard. A mighty scream erupted from beyond the dust and smoke. Caden and Mickle looked at one another, wide-eyed. The scream lasted for mere seconds, but long enough to send chills into the logger and his kin's very souls. The sound was unlike anything ever heard by man, or at least that lived to tell the tale. Without saying a word, both Caden and Mickle turned and started for the woods and home. But Caden failed to move. Looking down, he could see his feet beginning to be swallowed by the ground. The soil beneath him was slipping backwards into the pit, and he had no hope of escape. He could see that his son was about to suffer the same fate, the crumbling ground causing him to slip. Caden dove at McCall, arms outstretched, not to grab him in a futile attempt of saving himself, but to save his son. Caden pushed his only child in the back. The momentum flung the thinner lad through the air to safer, firmer ground. Mickle hit the ground hard, turning his head back towards his father to see the man he had learned so many skills and lessons from. The man who had always made his life fun and adventurous. The man who had kept him and his mother safe. The man whom he loved disappear into the smoky dust, sprawled on his front, sliding backwards, an almost apologetic smile showing through the mass of facial hair. Mickle stretched out a hand, but his father was gone. Mickle got up and ran. Caden rolled onto his back, speeding his way down upon the loose rocks and dirt. He got the sense he was gathering speed, the skin on his back stinging as stones and soil filled his shirt, cutting him. The air was thick and unbreathable. No way of knowing what lie ahead, no way of seeing the remains of the trees, broken and splintered, laying in his path ahead. Caden hit the fallen forest. The world went black. Then there was only white light and pain. One eye would open, blue sky above. Must be morning. The pain. Caden was sure his limbs were broken. He could not move. His breathing laboured and throat thick with blood. He hoped Mikkel was safe. He'd seen him run. That was enough. He waited for death. But a voice came from just beyond his view. A strange, stilted voice. Was it the one that had screamed? Caden didn't understand the language it was speaking. He'd heard orc tongue and elvish, and even a few words of the ancient god speak. None seemed familiar. The voice kept repeating a single word, it seemed, but in many languages, all alien to Caden. A flat, lifeless tone. Hello? Caden struggled. Who's there? The voice stopped. Caden heard shifting around him, as if metallic snakes circled around him, but nothing broke his view of the pale sky above. The voice repeated tonelessly, Who are you? Can you help me? Caden was confused, the pain dulling his thoughts. Please, the pain, help me! Despair began to well within Caden. He thought of Gwena and McCall. Wife, son, family. What? Caden stammered. How did you... I will learn. You will teach. I don't understand. Caden fell silent. Death had come to him. His one eye still looking to the sky as something cold, dark and emotionless studied his remains.